It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview Taylor Grainer, who is the Director of Mark of Retail Operations for the Kannapolis Caning Ballers. How are you doing today? Good. How are you doing, Brandon? Thanks for having me on your show. I'm doing good. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to work in baseball? So, um, honestly, when I went into college, I was not studying sports. I was pre-dental. Didn't really like all the science classes, so I decided to change my major, and I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Luckily, one of my friends recommended me to work for the football team at UNC Chapel Hill in recruiting, so I started working um, in recruiting my sophomore year of college, and I just fell in love with sports, worked with that for three years, and I was looking for an internship for the summer um, starting of my senior year. And I was driving down the interstate in Cary, North Carolina, and saw a sign for USA Baseball. And I had no clue that USA Baseball was in the area, so I decided to look it up. And honestly, it was two days before their intern open house. And I shot the person an email that was in charge of that and ended up being able to network and get an internship. And from that internship, it made me realize how much I really liked sports and I wanted to continue with it um, for a career. Can you talk about, of course, you said that you went to UNC Chapel Hill and you were the recruiting coordinator. What was that experience like? So that experience was really fun. Um, Like I said, I started my sophomore year. So everyone who works in the program under recruiting is assigned to a coach. So I'd help that coach with different daily tasks then I also had the honor of working with um, recruiting events on game day and then on non-game day, so official visits and non-official visits. So getting to know the recruits and their families was a big part of that, making sure you know, they get the right information for the program and making them fall in love with Carolina was a big part of that. And it was some of the best times I ever had. And the Carolina football team is like a big family. So from a recruit, recruiting service standpoint of course what does the official visit look like at Carolina? So an official visit um, it's a full weekend long the recruit gets to bring their family with them so they get to have nice dinners with the coaches Um, if it's a game weekend they get to go to a football game and get that full experience sometimes official visits are during basketball season which can be really fun so they'll take them to a basketball game and a lot of times they'll try to schedule them around the Duke game So they'll get to experience what it's like to be in the middle of college basketball's biggest rivalry. So just showing them what their college experience could be like if they were to commit to Carolina and really having them dive into that. So it was really fun. And honestly, if I was a recruit, I would have had a great time. So it was a really great experience for them. What was it like getting the job with Kannapolis Cannonballers? So getting the job with the Cannonballer, I knew I wanted to um, grow in my career. I honestly, I saw the listing on, online. It was listed as Canapolis Baseball because obviously no one knew what the team name was going to be. So that was going in blind but with that. Could have been something really crazy, but I was going to commit to it and see that through. And I got to meet the GM and some of the other staff at a baseball game. Very um, laid back environment. Um, get to know them, see their vision for the team, for the, well, for the brand, even though I didn't know the brand name, but just see their vision for that and get to know them on a deeper level, you know, instead of a regular interview where you might be a little scared. Um, And then I got to go and see the new ballpark eventually. Um, Not what it looks like now. It was a bunch of dirt and just like empty spaces. There weren't any seats there. So it was really cool to see that what the feature store would look like and just honestly dive in and think about what that could be like. And luckily I got um, an offer 
for it and I was so excited and here I am now loving every minute of it. What is the process like of course whenever a new business such as a sports team comes about and you have to be the, like the groundwork and set the groundwork and stuff? So a big part of that is just building your brand and getting the support of the community. When, from what I've heard, when the team decided to rebrand and rename, a lot of people didn't like the idea of change. Sometimes change can be hard, but at the same time, change can be good. Um, one cool thing about the new ballpark is it's been able to help downtown Kannapolis area revitalize. So the ballpark is that anchor, and then a lot of businesses have been able to come in. So we've gained their support. Um, we've gained the city's support in this, and even increase the number of fans that we have not only in Kannapolis but um, throughout the world in the United States. So it's been a whirlwind but it's been really fun just to see everyone latch on to our new brand the Cannonballers and really take it to heart. What is that process of rebranding like? So rebranding specifically I know we hired um, out of Louisville, Kentucky <laughs> Um, Dan Simon, he came up with a bunch of different ideas. I wasn't involved in that process, but um, I know our GM, assistant GM, and our owners were involved in that, but he came up with a bunch of different ideas, pitched it. They knew they wanted something that would connect back to the um, city, and to the community of Kannapolis, um, and when they saw the cannonball idea, they knew that was going to be what the team was going to be called because I don't know if you know, but Kannapolis is a mill town. So a big part of Kannapolis was Cannon Mills. So taking Cannonballer, something that's fun and high flying and turning it into like an identity and a brand was perfect for just how fun minor league baseball is, but also like giving back to the community and sticking to those roots. Can you talk about, of course, your roles and responsibility as the director of retail operations? Yeah, so... As a director of retail operations, honestly, especially in minor league baseball, it's like running a small business. So I do everything from um, hiring or help that comes in during baseball season, um, planning all the merchandise, buying all the merchandise on top of designing it, and then running our online store. So there's a lot of different things that come with that, but it's a lot of work, but it's also stuff start from a simple idea and honestly coming out and being on our sales floor at the store. What is the process of overseeing merchandise in the marketing? So with marketing, um, it's a lot of just throwing around different ideas. When it comes to marketing for the um, Cannon City Supply Co. Instagram, it's a lot of my own ideas. I can just take pictures, um, plan different giveaways, and just run with when it comes to marketing for our bigger platforms, the um, Cannonballers, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, I work a lot with our marketing team and our creative team. We come up with graphic ideas and just different things to get, um, get our audience engaged, different content that's really good to draw to them. So coming up in March, we have a really cool, um, really cool content idea coming up. It's called March Madness. So people will get to vote for their favorite Cannonballers gear. And then at the end, they'll get a discount on the winning product. So it's just trying to see what the community is going to like, stuff that's going to keep people engaged and keep people coming back for more and buying. That's the amazing idea with, of course, Indianapolis being one of the homes of, of course, March Madness. What is the process like on licensing a sports team? So when it comes to licensing, especially on the minor league level, I have to follow a lot of rules. So there are specific vendors that are licensed by minor league baseball and major league baseball. So I have to go directly to them to buy merchandise. So unfortunately, I can't buy um, merchandise from some vendors that I might want to, but it doesn't mean it's not an opportunity in the future for that vendor to be licensed through minor league baseball. So um having a licensed vendor means they can print our logos on their products and sell it to me. They can sell it on their website. I can sell it on my website. And it's all just so everything comes out to be the same, clean, and rules are followed. So, What was your experience like with the U.S. 
baseball in retail? So at USA Baseball, I started off interning in the retail department um, after my junior year of college. That was really fun. I got to help run the store every day, um, ship orders in our fulfillment center where we ship to so many different states. And it was a super busy time during the summer. Um, we had a lot of tournaments going on. Then I also, as an intern, got to travel to California and run one of our pop-up shops there. So that was a really cool experience there because USA trusts their interns to travel throughout the United States. Some of them get to go international depending on what's going on and just really hit the ground running and do what we do best. But it was a really great time interning. And then time I was blessed to get offered a full-time position after um, my senior year of college. Literally, I graduated on a Saturday and I was starting work on a Monday after graduation. So it was a whirlwind. Um, I had to prep for a tournament in Arizona that I ran. So I got to spend most of my summer out in um, Arizona, which was really fun at a spring training site, running the store there. I did that for two summers and then also get to travel to other sites like California to run different pop-up shops, get to go to different events or um, just to learn more about the business and look at new merchandise. But it was a great experience. I would not trade it for the world. How has your time at UNC in branding and stuff and also with USA Baseball, how has that helped you now to where you are now? So I learned so much at UNC, whether it was in the classroom, um, the baseball team, just learning how to do something on the fly because you never know what can come up and you got to make sure it works. And then especially with USA Baseball, learning how, you know, something might happen in the store. You got to think quick on your feet to get the problem solved and make your customers happy. So a lot of those skills have transferred over into my job now with the Cannonballers. And it's taught me so much. I feel like a big thing is your experience. And a lot of times that can be more than some of the stuff you learn in the classroom. So that hands-on experience in the sporting industry has really set me on the right foot. What are some of your future plans with the Cannonballers whenever it comes to merchandise and sales with fans not normally being able to be at stadiums? So recently, um, so we've been actually really lucky. Our stadium opened to the public in May. So we've been able to sell our merchandise, sell food and beverage since May, and we're still doing it today. We found out that we'll be able to have at least 30% capacity for this upcoming baseball season. So we're really excited about that. And I've started ordering all our merchandise, planning just different promotions for this upcoming baseball season. Got some really cool stuff up my sleeve. I feel like some of the stuff is um, items you might not normally see in a um, minor league stadium, I'm working with a local um, candle maker. So that's gonna be really cool to come up with a signature scent for the ballpark and the team store. So you have to stay tuned and check out kcballers.milbstore.com. That's wonderful. What advice would you give upcoming future people looking to get into retail on the sports level? So someone who's looking to get into retail on the sports level, I would say, you know, have that experience just working in a store. So it doesn't matter if it's your local boutique, you know, from your hometown, like I started in, or, you know, working somewhere like Target. Um, get that experience. I feel like people forget that retail is a huge part of the sporting industry. I know me personally, it's not something I first thought of when I thought of working in sports. A lot of people think of social media or operations, but after having that experience from high school and then coming in and seeing what a big operation retail was, especially at USA Baseball, it really, it changed the way I thought of the industry. And it's just crazy to see like, what a big impact retail plays in the sport industry, but I'd tell them to just go after it, um, network with people, see the way other people run their stores, connect on LinkedIn. That's a big thing that I like to do and just own you, what you are, your brand and continue to shoot for the stars.
That's wonderful advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media along with Canapolis Cannonballers? So uh, you can find the Cannon City Supply Store, which is our team store, on Instagram at Cannon City Supply Co. And then you can find the Cannonballers on all major social media networks at K Cannonballers. And then you can find me personally at Taylor Tots on Instagram. Thank you again, Taylor, for your interview and best of luck in this upcoming season. Thank you so much. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon. And you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Taylor, for your interview and best of luck. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.